There is nothing too hard for God. God can use anything. He can use your voice. He can use your hands. He can use your eyes. He can use your feet. If you would just allow him, you just open yourself up to him and say, God, just take what you've given me and you do something with it that I cannot do with it. You do something way bigger. Welcome to the Christian Music Archive podcast, conversations about Christ, community, and music. I'm your host, Dave Maurer. Each week, I am privileged to chat with a musical guest who is listed on the pages of the Christian Music Archive. There are thousands of creative men and women who have helped shape the soundtrack of the Christian faith, and we get to hear their stories, learn about how Christ has made a difference in their life, and Hopefully along the way, we'll learn how we can be a better part of our community. Have you ever had a random conversation with someone at the grocery store or maybe on an airplane, and you come away feeling like, man, this is a person I'd really like to get to know more? (laughs) Today's conversation with Byron Chambers was that for me. The time we spent together went way too fast, and I did not want it to end. Now, you might be asking yourself, who is Byron Chambers? Well, you're going to want to stick around and find out because Byron is a guy who has a love for Jesus that is so big, and he's using his mad skills to impact mainstream music with God's love in a way that few others can. So I'm definitely excited to share this with you, and you're going to want to stick around for this brief conversation. Well, we'll get to our interview uh, in just a minute, but I wanted to introduce you guys to Doug Hoffman. Doug is the Executive Director of Mercy, Inc., And I thought, Doug, it would be really cool if you could just tell us a little bit about what is Mercy, Inc., and what do you do? So Mercy, Inc. uh, is a humanitarian 501c3 organization. We do humanitarian work around the world, so we're compassion-orientated. We we like to describe ourselves as being the hands and feet of Jesus to those that are disadvantaged, those who don't have what we have, what we normally think of. And that might be food. That might be health. Uh, that might be spiritual. Uh, we reach out to them and want to, through compassion work, through helping hands, bring them to Christ. I mean, that's our ultimate goal around the world. So you're using the needs of people, physical, emotional, that kind of thing, as a way to reach them spiritually as well. Correct, Dave. So if you think about it, what, what did Jesus do when he was on this earth? Jesus reached out to them. He always was he was always healing, he was feeding, he was nurturing, he was helping emotionally. And that's what our model for, for mercy is, to be like Jesus and and always think about what would Jesus do if he was in that situation. And he'd love them. Yeah. Because what he he loved them and he brought them to him, to himself. Well, I'm excited to be partnering with you guys and over the next weeks we're going to be learning more about what mercy does around the world. Uh, but we're just really excited to be able to be a little bit of the part of the hands and feet of Jesus that you guys are doing. So thanks for letting us be partners with you guys. Well, Dave, we're, we're thrilled that you guys are, that you, you're willing to come alongside and partner with us. We uh, we very much appreciate that. You're going to be hearing more about Mercy, Inc. and the work they're doing in upcoming episodes. But if you'd like a sneak peek, jump over to our website, christianmusicarchive.com slash BAM. BAM stands for Business as Mission. So it's christianmusicarchive.com slash BAM. And you can learn how you can be involved with our partnership with Mercy, Inc. Well, I'm excited to welcome to the podcast somebody that uh, you've probably heard but maybe didn't realize. We're talking to Byron Chambers today, but nobody knows him as Byron we know him as Mr. Talkbox. Mr. Talkbox, welcome to the podcast. Hello. <laughs> hey, there it is. There it is. Oh, that's fun. So, you know, your name, Mr. Talkbox, that's after that piece of equipment you're doing, using, right? Yes, absolutely. It's, it's the instrument that I've uh, been playing for many, many years now. And uh, yeah, I got named that by my mother, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so what is that piece of equipment, if I can be so bold to ask? Oh, yeah, absolutely. This is this piece of equipment is basically a synthesizer with a little box, that, which is called the talk box. And uh, it's a, a speaker and an amp 
housed in a box with an opening on the top where you put this little tube in the opening and you seal it so all of the sound can go inside of the tube. Uh-huh. And then you place the other side of the tube into your mouth and then you hold your breath and then you shape your mouth into words and then it'll sound like this. Diversity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and that little teaser is probably where a lot of our listeners may have first heard you because you got hooked up with Toby Mack and we're singing with Diversity for a bit, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, just one of, one of my favorite uh, times of my career is being able to be a part of the Toby Mac and Diver City movement in which they're still going. And yeah. I'm just uh, I'm great friends with them. That's that's my family. We're not friends. We're family. And so uh, a lot of it. Yeah, a lot of everybody know me in, uh, in the Christian uh, community, man. They know me from uh, my time with Toby Mac, which I'm very thankful and grateful for him uh, opening the doors and bringing my talents alongside his. But you've, but you've forayed into other people too, because you've worked with like uh, Bruno Mars and and Rihanna and a bunch of other people. Yes, absolutely. This thing kind of morphed into something way bigger than um, I ever could imagine. And uh, you know, the cool thing about it though, Dave, is that, I can authentically be who I am yeah. and it be accepted and it and and people are cool with me. They're not it's it's not a a funny thing that I am a a Christian, you know, or I'm a believer and uh they know I don't have any tri- tricks up my I told them I said I don't have any tricks up my sleeve. <laughs> I am a, a, I love Jesus. His his joy uh resides in my heart and there it is. Yeah. And and that's what comes with this package. So yeah. Well, and isn't that what we're supposed to do as believers? We're supposed to go into all the world and be who we are in Christ yes. to make disciples. Yes. So, what an opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you mentioned early on your mom gave you the name Mr. Talkbox. How did you get started, you know, singing and making music like you're doing? Uh, I grew up in the church. You know, my mom and dad were ministers at our local church back in Orlando, Florida. Okay. And uh, alongside of that, they had a gospel group. And we used to travel the country and we used to, you know, sing every weekend. We were singing at churches. We were singing at conventions. We were on TV. Oh, wow. We were doing everything. Yeah. So it was a big thing. The name of our band was The Chambers. And so, uh, but the way I got started was they used to rehearse um, when I was a little kid. I was I was about seven years old and they used to rehearse. We had a small apartment and they would rehearse there. Like the group would come over and they would rehearse in the apartment and my parents had bought me this little drum set, this little Muppet drum set with, with animals face <laughs> plastered on the front of it. Like, Rah! awesome. awesome. <laughs> and so one day the, the drummer couldn't make the rehearsal, but they still rehearsed. And so I just took it upon myself. I just picked that little drum set up. <laughs> I walked out there to that rehearsal and I put it down and I said, I'm going to play. So I started playing and my father was like, whoa. He, like he knew I could play, but he didn't know I knew, like I knew the music. Yeah. I was I was because re- I was listening to and I was in the room practicing with them every week. Yeah. So I, I that's where it all it kicked off for me. And the next thing you know, I was playing drums in the in the group. And then uh, after I you know was playing drums, my brother, my older brother, he played drums too. So I migrated to the bass guitar, uh-huh. and so I started playing the bass guitar in the group. And then. Uh, after I, I, I was like, man, we, we need to take this up another notch. So I started learning how to play the keyboard. So we got a bass player. I started playing the keyboards and then there you go. And then next thing you know, I was playing guitar. So it was just kind of oh, like, wow. and I'm singing this whole time. Yeah. I play every, I play five instruments. So, and I sing as well. So yeah, it's, it's. It's pretty, uh, yes, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> so, so you're the ringer. So that's how I got my story. You're the ringer for the band. If you need anything, yeah. Byron's got it covered. Yep. <laughs> hey, yep, exactly. There, there are many times where I've had to, even on the Toby tours, where I've had to sometimes maybe jump on a drum set or maybe play a guitar part or, or, or something because, you know, you know, things happen. And uh, so I, I, I was what you call the utility guy. Like I could do it. I could <laughs> sing the lead parts. I could be the artist. I could do it all. <laughs> so the first album that I know about is your album, My Testimony. Was that where you, was that your yeah. first record? Yes, that was my very first record, which that was the record that essentially uh, got me to working with Toby Mac. And that record, yeah, yeah, it's funny. I mean, that record, uh, I was, uh, that's when I was transitioning out of uh, playing with my parents' group. I was, I was, 
venturing out to just step out on my own. Mm -hmm. And um, that record is probably one of my most prized possessions. We did it. We recorded it in my room. Um, at the time, it was, we were, my family, I, I, I'm married. I've been married now. We'll, we'll be celebrating 23 years, by the way, on in about three weeks Very from now. Cool. So, Congratulations, <laughs> man. Thank you. Thank you. So, but at that time, this was back in 2003, we were, man, we were at the rock bottom. Like we had, we had three kids and we were staying at our friend's house. We didn't even have uh, nowhere to live at the time. Mm -hmm. And our friends, uh, they opened their doors to us at their house and we recorded that record in the room, in our room. And we turned it into a little studio. My, one of my best friends, he had a little, a little studio and he brought it. We turned it into a studio and we recorded the My Testimony album. And I was such, I was at such a, a pure place. I was so happy at that time, believe it or not. I was very happy, yeah. excited to just play this talk box for Jesus at that time. And I was just like, I can't wait for the world to hear it. And then it came out, sold in over 17 different countries. It was the number one. I had, Well, I have three number one singles in Japan from that CD. Oh, now, wait a minute. How did that happen? Yeah, come on. <laughs> like, yeah, I was like, whoa. A boy from Orlando, number one in Japan? Yeah, like, it was the craziest thing. Like, Japan has been my... They're probably one of my biggest support. Uh, uh, they're probably my biggest supporters. Wow. And so, yeah, yeah. So we 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 did that, and then we just continued on, and uh, you know, here we are. So so you hooked yeah. up with Toby. He heard that album, and then so that's what what prompted him to reach out to you and say, "Hey, come join Diverse City, huh?" Yes. Well, you know what? It, it, it kind of it happened in phases, basically. You know, because when I did that record. Um, well, no, check this out. Let me, let me, let me take that back. Rewind. Toby Mac. Yeah, rewind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Toby Mac. We well, my my mom and dad. We used to do a thing called the Sunday Gospel Brunch at at uh, the House of Blues, ah. and we did it in our yeah, it was in Orlando, Florida, at, at Walt Disney World. And so, one Sunday, Toby Mac and Kirk Franklin were on the I Have a Dream Tour. Now, I didn't have a clue about that. Now, at yeah. the time, too, I didn't know who Toby Mack was. Right. I knew Kirk Franklin. I was like, oh, I know Kirk. I want to see Kirk Franklin. Absolutely. So, yeah, so when his team, they all started coming in during the gospel brunch. And we were playing, and they started, they were on the side of the stage watching us. Little did I know, Dave, uh, uh, David Wyatt, which is Toby Mack's uh, uh, music director, he came in, he was watching, he pulls Toby in, Toby sees me, and our closing number was a song that I did on the talk box. And it was, cra it was crazy, it was amazing. And so I come off the stage, I get approached by David Wyatt, he said, hey, Toby Mack wants you to, uh, he wants to talk to you, and he wants to uh, see if you can get on a song for him with that talk box. And I was like, absolutely. And so back then, we had a he had what you call a Walkman. Okay, I remember the Walkman. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he had a demo of Diverse City, and he 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 said. So I met Toby, and Toby said, "Hey, check this out. Let me know if it's something you could. Let me know if you could do something on this." Yeah. And I saw so I, and and I I uh, I heard it. I said absolutely, and uh, they we exchanged information. A few weeks later, I was back in that room recording a song called Diverse City, wow. uh, which was the title cut of Toby Mac's second solo career uh, album. Yeah. And from that point, the rest is history. That record went gold. And I, myself and my, my buddy, Ivan Santiago, we wrote my verse on that song, which is the second verse. Mm -hmm. And the rest is history. Very, very cool. So, so you were with Diverse City for a while, but you... How did you get picked up by like the likes of Kendrick Lamar and Rihanna and and all those other folks? I, I was touring with Toby Mac and um, I started touring with him. My family and I we moved to to uh, Nashville in two thousand nine. Okay, and so I was doing I was recording my album uh, uh, at the time. I did an album called My Time, which was a really huge success for us, and we did that that record. And I got the call from Toby Mac to come on tour with him because I was in Nashville. I was like. Wow, look, yeah, let's get that. That makes sense. And so uh, I go on tour with Toby. I started touring with them for about four, it was about four years, was it? Two, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, five years actually. Wow. 2014, I decided 
I got to take another leap. I got to take another step of faith. Mm -hmm. I, God was calling my faith higher. And I took a step of faith by, by saying, hey, Toby, man, this has been great. I got to step down. I got to go through this Mr. Talkbox thing that I just, I got to go be a, a solo artist. Yeah. So I started doing these acapella videos online. I started doing all of these and, and I was doing it with the talk box where it's this multi-screen uh, uh, videos. It was a bunch of, you know, it's a bunch of uh, screens of me doing all these big harmonies. Right. So I started, yeah. So I started covering all of these mainstream songs. I started covering gospel songs, my songs. I started just doing a whole bunch of covers just for the love of the art of the talk box. Yeah. Next thing, next thing you know, I get her. I heard uh, there's a guy named Nathan East. There's a oh um, yeah, bass uh, player. He's a ba yeah, yes, the legendary oh, bass player, one time. of the most recorded bass players. Yeah, man. And so I get on a song with him, and the bass player for Bruno Mars. His name is Jamario, my good friend. Jamario happens to be the biggest Nathan East fan. So I got a song with Nathan East that's called Daft Funk. Song went to the straight to the number one chart, I um, mean number one spot on the jazz charts, and that song did it was huge. And so Jamario he reached out to me on social media on Twitter to be exact. He said, "Hey man, oh man, I love what you did on 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 uh, the Nathan East record. I want to work with you. I want to do a record with you. I want to do something with you." But we, and we never got around to doing a record with him, but we became friends over that period from 2014 all the way to 2016, wow. in which. In 2016, he called me and said, Bruno Mars wants to work with you. Oh, wow. He has something to you. Yep. And so at that point, uh, uh, he gave me Bruno's number. He called me and then uh, we hit it off. He had been watching me for a year because my videos, I forgot to mention that all of my videos, they went viral. When I say two, three million views, every wow. time I posted a video, wow. it went crazy. Yeah. And so... Yeah, all of the celebrities, all of the big stars were reaching out to me. Like I began to just be a celebrity favorite. And but Bruno reached out and uh, we we talked and he said, "Man, I got this song. I want to get you on." And uh, there you go. Yeah, I was I was just kind of bringing up this list of songs because you have a ton of people on your latest album. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. It's beyond me that I got to get all those all those uh really big stars on my record people like t Payne, like i know the christian music uh, world probably don't identify with him as much but when i tell you he's probably the biggest one of the biggest selling artists of all time in uh in hip-hop and uh, r&b music and uh he does a sound similar to mine he does auto-tune okay and so He's like the king of auto tune, and I was deemed as the king of the talk box now. So we we I did a song on his record, and then I called him saying, "Well, hey, you got to come and be on my record as well too." So he's on there. We got P.J. Morton on there, which is the son of uh, Bishop Paul S. Morton, and uh, he's the fifth member of the sixth member of Maroon Five. Oh, okay. <laughs> wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. P.J. Morton's a real big deal. It's several Grammy Award. Uh, uh, wins. He's a uh, he's a believer. We have Avery Sunshine. She's a believer. We have my kids, Yabrion and BJ. Those oh, are my my, cool my babies. That? Yeah, it's yeah, super duper cool. And my mom is on the album. And uh, I just I'm telling, you, we had such a fun time. And uh, I just yeah. And then we got my man John Cooper. Oh Let's boy, kill it. come on. Oh, oh that, that that's a connection. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, that's it. one of my closest friends in the world is john cooper yeah what a great guy what a great guy yes yes loves the lord and uh you yeah. know you a lot of people give them a lot of uh of flack man because they don't know them off the stage you know they right. they do their 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 thing but it gets them into doors and they get to minister to people that normally the church uh, uh demographic will not be able to reach and so that's kind of the same thing that happened with me um you know I, i'm getting to talk to people and, you know, that's the first thing they ask is, why are you always so joyous? Why are you always <laughs> smiling? And, and I said, well, like I told you guys before, Jesus Christ, he's yeah. the best thing that's ever, ever happened to me in my life and my family. And I, I almost well up in tears when I when I think about how just how amazing God has been to me and my family that he would allow me to 
take an instrument like this. And, and that's why I tell people all the time, there is nothing too hard for God. Amen. God can use anything. Yeah. He can, like you said, he can use your voice. He could use your hands. He could use your eyes. He could use your feet. If you would just allow him to, to you just open yourself up to him and say, God, just take what you've given me and you do something with it that I cannot do with it. You do something way bigger. And that's what he's done for me in my career to be able to work and to, to rub shoulders with the greatest. Yeah. And I look at Toby Mack. He's one of the greatest of all time yeah. in the music. And so, um, yeah, so I'm I'm humbled. And now I'm sitting here getting to talk with you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll talk a little bit about, because I, when I've talked to people who've grown up in the church and grown up, I was a pre- preacher's kid myself. I yes. had to come to a point where I made Jesus my own to where it wasn't what yes. mom and dad told me to do, but it's really Ooh. what was my own, how Jesus touched me. How did that transition, when did that transition take place for you? Oh, great question. For me, my, I, I call it the encounter, uh, you know, with, mm-hmm. with Christ was back when I was in Orlando, Florida. It had to have been 2000, I would say 2001. Um, I had a personal in- encounter with Christ. I was, uh, I grew up in the church, so I knew about God and I knew about Christ. You know, I heard it preached all my life. Uh, right. We went to Sunday school. We, we, you know, we knew scriptures in the Bible and, you know, we knew, but my personal encounter was is so you know it's so different than most people but i'm i was at home in my apartment i was living in sanford florida i will never forget this moment i was living in sanford florida and we were in our part i was in my apartment my wife was going to work my 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 daughter my youngest daughter at the time she was a baby she was asleep in her crib and i was the only one home and my other two kids they were at school so i was sitting in my living room on the floor and I just had gotten tired of just living because I was just living a crazy life. I was, I was very promiscuous at that time. And just, I almost lost my marriage. I lost, almost lost everything. And this is why I tell people, God always turns your tragedy into triumph. Mm. Uh, Never take, you know, it for granted, you know? And so that moment, I had that moment. I said, God, I'm so tired of living a double life. I'm singing gospel music. I'm playing in this gospel music and I'm telling people about you, but I'm not living it. I'm not living the way you would would approve. And I realized I can't do this by myself. So I say, God, if you are real, I said, and I knew he was real, but you know, Mm -hmm. you know how we get sometimes we have to test him out. (laughs) (laughs) I said, Lord, if you are real, I need to feel your Holy Spirit now. I need to be filled with your spirit right now. And I tell you, Dave, that room, that living room I was sitting in, it felt like I was floating in the air. The Holy Spirit came in and it transformed my life. I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. I was crying. I was uncontrollably, uh, uncontrollably crying. And I just felt God's love wrap his complete arms around me and told me that you are no longer condemned, son. You are not, I don't, I don't condemn you. Like the Bible says in Rome, in Romans, it says that, you know, there's no more condemnation. Don't beat yourself up for what you've done. You came to the right, you came, you come to me. You, you, you ask God, you, when you ask God to forgive you, he actually forgives you, but it's another step to it. We have to answer the call. We have to say, all right, God, I ask you for your forgiveness, but now I'm going to try and strive to live right. I'm going to live according to your word. I'm going to live. He said, if you love me, keep my word, keep my commandments. And I made a vow to God that night, that day, that I was going to live for him. And uh, I didn't, I didn't want anything out of it. You know what I'm saying? Dave? like a lot of times people want, thing and what they you know yep. you know what i'm saying yep. like okay god if you do this for me then i'll do this for you and it's like no just do it because god loves you first and just do it because he, he says do it and that's that was my heart in that moment i was just like i don't care like if you i don't lord just have your way in my life right now i want you and my life was changed forever yeah. forever 
Well, and I just think, you know, sometimes we as believers think that this relationship with God is this big mysterious thing, but he just reaches us right where we're at, sitting on our living room floor with our heart wide open. He just says, I'm here, I'm going to fill it, and I'm going to bless you. Yes, absolutely. Not that the difficult times go away, per se, because I'm sure you, well, you talked about moving to Nashville and still struggling, but God was there. Yeah, yeah, he was there, and I I went through, uh, uh, right before we moved to Nashville, and and, and a lot of times, here's a a word, I, I call it a word, a lot of times, problems come before promotion. God has to test you to see if not. I don't know. I won't say test because that God doesn't test us, but God has to know that you're going to rock with him. Mm. I went through the most I I went through the most worst uh, uh, depression in 2008. I talk about it in a song called Fighting, and that's on my My Time album, one of my favorite songs. Uh, it literally has just got into a movie about sex trafficking, actually. So mm. you, the world will be hearing about that song a Very little bit cool. more here. So, uh, yeah. So, but I talk in that song about me going through that depression in 2008, where I almost lost it, uh, Dave. Like I, I, I thought I was going to die. I just, I wasn't eating. I wasn't sleeping. I was, it was just, it was a bad, I don't know what had come over me, but every day, I was praising. I was on the treadmill running. I would I would put on my praise music. I would shout in my apartment. I was at the rock bottom and I was shouting. I was praising God yeah. because I knew he was going to bring me out. It was tough. It was very hard. But I just knew he was going to bring me out. I just knew it. Yeah. And so I kept I, I just kept believing. Next thing you know, I come out of depression and in 2009 hits, we everything changed for us for the better. Yeah. We, we moved. Uh, I started touring with Toby Mac was one of the best, best things that ever happened to me and my family. And then next thing you know, we moved forward. Here I am four Grammy awards. My, my new album debuted at number four. Wow. My, my, it's just, it's so many, uh, uh, a lot of people call it decorations yeah. <laughs> that yeah. God has put on my name. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that stuff is cool, but, the biggest decoration, the biggest badge that I wear is that I'm a believer Amen. of the most high God and his son, Jesus. Oh, that's amazing. Well, and I think that kind of parlays into the song I want you to introduce, because I, if, if it's all right with you, I want to play your song, Valley, uh, for our listeners. Oh, yeah. Tell us a little bit about, because that's what you're talking about, right? Going through the valley. Yes, absolutely. So set this song up for our listeners. This song is a song that I wrote. Uh, during a time where I was very, very, I was, I was, I was in the valley, you know, I was actually in the valley. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I, I wrote this song, uh, with the mindset of that, you know, we, we cannot negate the, the, the process that God has for us. We have to go through our process. And once, while we're in that valley, the Lord can come in and speak to you and get your heart ready for what's to come. I'm in the valley. It's looking real gloom. It is shallow. My mind is consumed. It feels lonely. Don't know what to do. in the valley Pharaoh's behind me Red seas ahead I hear a whisper Don't fear or look back But I doubt it The voice I Yeah. 
that's what this song is. When you're walking through the valley, guess what? It's hard, but God is not going to let you burn up. God is not going to let you faint. He's not going to let you fall. Go through it. When you come out of that fire, like they say, you come out as pure gold. So that's what Valley is all about. Every Saturday, we send out a prayer letter to a bunch of people that are praying for musicians today. How can we specifically be praying for you in these days and months ahead? Oh, my gosh. Well, thank you all. First of all, thank you for that. Uh, that is that is really, really a, a, a blessing. We really, we really need it. You know, obviously, we've been in a pandemic, and it's been really hard as far as, like, you know, not being able to tour, which is a lot of people's main source of income in the music industry. And for me, uh, I've been blessed to, you know, my career has been built virtually. So my prayer is that, you know, we could continue to be able to uh, just to be able to continue to put music out at radio and, and, and just at, to be able to, to, to continue to spread the good word of Christ and, um, yeah, we just want to continue to pray for that. We want to pray for wisdom. We want to pray. We want to continue to pray for wisdom. And we want to pray for what God wants to say through us and how he wants to say what he wants to say. And we just want to continue to pray for provision, provision for our family, provision for the ministry, uh, provision. That's 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 a main, main deal. Amen. Yeah, well, we're happy Amen. to do that with you and excited to Thank hear you. about the people that you're working with, that you're. Yeah, you're singing, but you're also sharing that beautiful smile and that beautiful love of Jesus with yeah. people saying, hey, man, this is where you need to go. And who knows? We might be seeing some new Christian music from some artists that we'd be surprised of. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, Dave. Yeah, let's pray for that, too. You know, let's pray that the Lord continues to move on the hearts of the of the mainstream artists, too, uh, uh, that we get to rub shoulders with, that we 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 just in, uh, inspire them you know what i'm saying to 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 talk about christ because you know it'll be amazing to have a t-pain talking about the lord or or pj you know it'd be amazing that was one of the fastest 30 minute conversations i've ever had <laughs> man i just love byron's heart and I appreciate the way he is using his skills and his fame to point people to Jesus. Do you remember what he said? He said, there is nothing too hard for God. God can use anything, your voice, your hands, your eyes, your feet. If you just open yourself up to him and say, you do something with it. By using what God gave him, God is using to do something bigger than Mr. Talkbox could ever do on his own. You know, that's the cry of my heart these days. I'm thankful for the gifts and talents and platform that God has given me. I just want to be sure to use those gifts for something that will make an impact for God for eternity. And you can do that too. Maybe God gave you a mechanically inclined mind. Ask God how you can use your mechanic skills to further his work. Do you have a knack for finances? Maybe you could help train kids how to budget and how to save money. Or maybe you're really good at hunting and fishing. Why not take a friend who doesn't know Jesus on a hunting trip and use that time to show God's love in a personable way? Like Mr. Talkbox, Byron Chambers himself said, God can use anything if we are just willing to offer our time and skills. There's a ton of scriptures that back up what Byron and what I'm talking about, but I'm going to focus on 1 Peter 4 verse 10. It says, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. As always, thanks for joining me for this conversation today. I am grateful that we get to spend this time together each week hearing stories of God's amazing faithfulness. As a regular listener to this podcast, would you mind taking a few minutes and rating it on your favorite podcast app? Reviews and ratings really help spread the word so that other folks can hear about these great conversations. And if you have comments or questions for me, please feel free to drop me a message on any of the social media platforms. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Patreon by searching for at CCM Exchange. Or you can always drop me an email on the website christianmusicarchive.com. I'm really looking forward to our time together next week when I have another great conversation with one of the musicians you'll find on the pages of the Christian Music Archive. 
So until then, remember this, God loves you. In fact, he's crazy about you.